So here we are today for a Jack Panzer album ranking and Anna is going to help me with the cover presentation. Hi everyone. Although Jack Panzer are around for 40 years and disbanded only for a brief time span in between, the discography is manageable. Nine regular studio albums, plus some re-recordings and demos grown into albums. No live album, by the way. The new studio album entitled The Hallowed is already recorded and coming out soon. Meanwhile, let's review the old ones, which include a handful of masterpieces of American power metal. I suppose the last place in this ranking will be rather undisputed. Jack Panzer attempted to make a modern metal album with thrash influences, but people who want that buy albums from Machine Head or somebody else instead. On the following tour with Overkill and Massacre, the show at my hometown was cancelled, which spared me the embarrassment. And I got my money back for the ticket. One album only singer Daniel left, since he was definitely in the wrong band. The fans wanted the tyrant back, and they got what they wanted on the next album, The Fourth Judgment. Re-recorded songs from the first decade of the band history. Fans grew up with the original versions and loved them, so even if it's a good selection, these re-recordings may not have been necessary. There would be a point if the production was a lot better, but this is not the case. It feels like a repetition, not an improvement. After the excellent Fourth Judgment, expectations were sky-high for the follow-up The Age of Mastery, and it could not fulfill them. It is just an okay album with some good tracks, some not so good, and some re-recordings. Originally the band planned to record a mini-album only, but then a few remakes were used to fill it up to album size. I'm a bit unhappy about placing this so low, but on Casting the Stones the wow moments are missing. An album like Thane to the Throne, for example, had more variety to offer. Here it's a bit too much of the same. Good album, but it doesn't click with me somehow. Originally released as a self-titled 4-track EP in 1983, it was reissued as a 5-song CD under the title Tyrants in 92, and finally became a 12-song album in 2013 when more early recordings of the band were added. So I decided to count it among the albums. The quality leaves a lot to be desired, naturally. The main reason to buy it is the uh, trashy sleeve. Recorded in 1987, but officially released only in 2004, to put an end to the bootleg versions. Just like Ample Destruction, there are many different cover artworks around for it. With Bob Paduba on vocals, Chain of Command developed into a more smooth, melodic direction, but songs like the title track, She Waits and Sawn to Silence became Jack Panzer classics. In 2017, six years after the last studio album, Jack Panzer returned with this record, and they delivered the goods. While many of their album sleeves look like coming out of a random generator, this one is finally somewhat memorable, the mad scientist in his laboratory. My faves are the faster songs like Far Beyond All Fear or Fire of Our Spirit. From the strong opener Condemned to Fight to the final Book of Kells with its string arrangements, I would call this one of the more epic and atmospheric albums of the band. It's really good. Some 
bands change their musical style quite a bit when they create concept albums, for example Wasp on Crimson Idol. Jack Panzer didn't need to do that on Thane to the Throne because the dark and heroic story of Macbeth fit them like a glove. No piano ballads here. With the excellent guitar work of Mark and Chris, songs like King at the Price or Fall of Dunsinane would also be able to stand on any other album. The story doesn't suppress the songs like it happened to Dio on the Magica album. Only the final track, with its choirs, tries to add some extra epic spice, but that's fine. A timeless album. From the powerful Take to the Sky to the thrilling Cold as the Blade, a perfect Jack Panzer album. If you want to introduce new listeners to Jack Panzer without solely relying on the stuff of the 80s, I'd recommend to play Mechanized Warfare to them. Recorded in 1986, Shadow Thief remained a demo tape first, although one of the most wanted of its kind and bootlegged on CD. In 2013 we finally saw its official release as an album. Shadow Thief really should have been the follow-up to Ample Destruction. It's full of great songs like the title track Take the Pain or Lustful and Free. The sixth album by Jack Panzer was the most important one in the band's career, a real comeback few had expected. At the time it was the fourth album, hence the title, because Chain of Command and Shadow Thief hadn't become official yet. The fourth judgement was proof that in the late 90s Jack Panzer could still write strong songs on the same quality level as the best of their 80s material, so we could forget about that glitch Dissident Alliance. I filmed the band live on the tour for the fourth judgment. You find some live stuff on my channel. There are confusingly many versions of this album, with different cover artworks and different track lists. Some include Black Sunday or other bonus tracks, remixed or original mix. In any case, the first full-length album by Jack Panzer remained one of the ultimate American power metal offerings with songs like Warfare, Harder Than Steel and Generally Hostile. A recent vinyl re-release by High Roller Records included two alternative covers as posters in case you found it hard to decide which version you want to go for. Really nice touch. Thanks everyone for watching.